All right, I'd like to welcome back on Joe Maniello, Newsday's NFL's pick columnist. Joe, how are you doing today? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. Excited to get after it for week eight. It was a tough week for me last week. I went one and four, which brought me to 20 and 16 on the year. You went three and two, which brought you up to 16 and 20 heading into week number eight. Yeah, it was a, it was a good week uh, for me, but I lost with the, the Bears on Monday night. Yeah, that was... The- that was a that was a tough one. I like the Bears as well, so that cost me in some other things. But let, let's get into it for Week Eight. We'll start with the Jets, who uh, covered for the first time this year. They're playing Kansas City this week, though. The Chiefs are favored by nineteen and a half. Who do you like in this game? Yeah, they finally covered. They finally uh, put our put our um, you know bet against the Jets until they give you a reason not to theory. Although they did only score ten points, so right. surprised the Bills kicked six field goals. I mean, I don't know what the chances of that are, but. Uh, I still don't think you should uh, have any confidence in the Jets this week. Uh, Nineteen and a half points is it's a lot of points, but you know if someone who's like doesn't if, if you're like a, a newcomer or someone who doesn't really bet games or even like you know in pools, you might say nineteen and a half points. Oh my god, that sounds great. How can you not take it? There's, there's a reason why it's nineteen and a half. The Jets think the Chiefs are either not the best team in the NFL, the second best team. Uh, remarkable stat last week: they scored 40, 43 points at Denver, and they were zero for eight on third down. I mean that just wow. shows you how dominant this team is. They scored a pick six, a special teams touchdown. I, I mean, there's also the Le'Veon Bell revenge game factor. There's, uh, Kansas City is at home, haven't played there in a couple of weeks. Uh, I just don't see how you can take the Jets. I, I would take the I would take the Chiefs even if this number was in the mid twenties. You know, uh, this game is to me it's like you know, what's more likely? What do you think is more likely? The Chiefs score forty or the Jets score ten? I mean, I, I know we're picking up. I know we're picking on the Jets a lot, but it's right. Just, it's just hard, you know. Even without the fans, you know, they got like what a third third amount of fans there. It's a tough place to play. Uh, I mean, the Chiefs are just stacked everywhere. I, I, I don't see how they're not going to be motivated to get Le'Veon Bell a couple touchdowns against his old team. I think he'll score twice. I think the Jets just get you know just get crushed. You know, like you know something like you know forty five to ten, something like that. Just some ridiculous uh, Cowboys Bill Super Bowl score from the nineties. Right. So I'll, I'll, lay, I'll lay the points all day. I'm I'm right there with you. That number on paper seems drastic at 19 and a half, but like you said, if even if at the mid 20s, I would still take it. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to dominate that that Jets secondary. I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with that high powered offense. And like you said, Le'Veon Bell is going to be extremely motivated. I thought he looked okay in a small sample size this past week. I think they're going to try to get him the ball even more. And on top of the Jets struggles you know, throughout the entire year, they are awful on the road under Adam Gase. So this just makes it even worse that they have to go on the road to Kansas City. I guess, like you said, only a third of the fans, maybe that's a slight silver lining, but I don't think it matters. I think this is going to be an ugly, like, 44-10 kind of game. Uh, The Jets' offense completely shut down in the second half last week against Buffalo. Kansas City can hold their own on defense, and we know what that offense can do. I think this is going to be a real stinker, so I'm with you on the Chiefs here. That brings us to the Giants and the Buccaneers. Bucks are favored by 10.5 on Monday Night Football. Who do you like in this game, Joe? Yeah, another one of those spreads where you're like, wow, 10.5, that's a lot of points away on the road. But, again, there's a reason why. I mean, the Bucks are really playing well. Tom Brady and Gronkowski are clicking. They probably have, if not the best defense, top three defense in the league. And um, Todd Bowles' defense playing great. His return to MetLife Stadium. I think it's going to be a long night for the Giants. Uh, they have like an extra, a little bit of a bi- mini bye week playing the Eagles last Thursday, but this Giants team just doesn't have enough pieces. Uh, I don't know how they lost that Eagles game, but it's just typical Giants fashion the last few years. I think this is a really tough matchup for them. Uh, the Bucks are rolling here. Last week they beat the Raiders 45-20. to The week before they beat the Packers 38-10. to those teams are those, those teams are much better than the Giants. So it's a big number, like the Jets game too. Similar, you know, they could always have a backdoor cover both of these games, but this feels like a lopsided game. Another one, you know, thirty-five to ten kind of game. I just don't see the Giants stopping Brady in that offense with all those weapons, and I don't I don't see Daniel Jones doing anything against the Todd Bowles blitz savvy defense. I think this is a another boring game, a blowout game for a. The local, so I'll take the Bucks minus ten and a half. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you there, Joe. I'm taking the Bucks as well. And you know, you mentioned all the points the Buccaneers have put up the last few weeks, and they they finally seem to be clicking offensively. But to me, 
it's the, the Todd Bowles defense. I think he's going to have a long day for Daniel Jones. I, I think we get a couple of Jones turnovers and – you know, everyone talks about the Jets offense being bad, and rightfully so. It's awful, but the the Giants offense can be right up there as well. Uh, they struggle to score points, which is a recipe for disaster against a defense like this. And I just think that, you know, with a, with a veteran and Tom Brady and coming in to MetLife Stadium, he's played there a bunch in his career, uh, had better luck against the Jets than the Giants, as we know. But I think that this is just going to be a blowout kind of game. I think we're looking at a... I don't know, like a 35 to 14 kind of game here uh, for the Buccaneers to get another win in the Tom Brady era. That brings us to our game of the week. We're looking at the Steelers and the Ravens, a great matchup of the AFC North. Ravens are favored by three and a half in this game. Who do you like? The game is in Baltimore, correct? Yeah, in Baltimore. Yeah, this, this is to me is the not only game of the week, could be game of the year competition here. I think it's going to be a great game. Ravens are off a bye. I think this game was supposed to be played this uh, – it was moved back a week or something changed because of the Steelers-Titans uh, week four bye. Right. So the, I think the Ravens had a bye one week earlier or something like that. I think they were supposed to play last week. That's what it was. And uh, the Ravens are on a bye. So they do have an edge there. But I like the Steelers in this matchup. Uh, it's funny because you, before the year when we did our picks, you, you were high on the Steelers and I wasn't. And you were saying how great their defense was going to be. And you were right. But you've been picking against them lately and I haven't. So – we kind of went back and forth on that. But right. uh, I just think their defense is great. And I feel like the offense has enough weapons where I mean, the, the, the way to beat the Ravens is that the, you know Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs have shown, the Titans have shown it last year and the Chargers before that, get a lead on Lamar Jackson. They are not comfortable playing from behind. He, he's like the, the typical front runner. I mean, he, he has to, you know, if they're at 14-0, then it's, it's over. But if they're behind 10 nothing, he just – they get, I don't know if he gets nervous or not, but maybe it doesn't fit their system where it's you know run heavy. You got to start throwing more, but that's the way to beat the Ravens. I think the Steelers. Uh, I think they'll get out to an early lead. I think it's gonna be a great game. I think it'll be a close game, uh, maybe even overtime. And I was I was alerted to a great stat today. Uh, since 1999, they played 46 times. Each team has 23 wins, so it's one wow. of the best rivalries in the game. And they both average like similar amount of points, 28.5 and 19.7 or something. But it's just uh, a, you know such an evenly matched rivalry. And, yeah, if the Ravens win, I won't be shocked at all, obviously. But I think the Steelers, are, I, the, to me, the golden rule in picking these games is that if you think the if you think the underdog can win outright, you always take the point, especially when it's over a field goal. So I feel like three and a half is a lot. And uh, I think the Steelers are going to win the game, so I'll take the three and a half points. I think it's going to be a great game. I think the defense just makes, uh, I guess, one more big play. I think it'll be like a, you know, 30 to 27 kind of game, classic game. You yeah. Know? I uh, <laughs> I'm gonna continue my trends of picking against the Steelers. It hasn't been too kind to me, but I like the Ravens this week off the bye. Uh, st- like you said, Steelers great football team. They've been playing really well. Um, I-, I just really like what the Ravens are doing. Coming off of a bye week, also uh, they have one loss, so they're gonna want to keep pace. They'd go down two games if they if they lose this one to the Steelers. And uh, I think this is gonna be a real dog fight. But I think in the end, in the fourth quarter. Lamar Jackson runs a little bit on that defense and evades a couple of sacks, and they go up late. So I'm going to take the Ravens in like a, a 20, 27-20 kind of back-and-forth game here. Uh, but a real, a really good game, and I, like you said, I wouldn't be stunned if the Steelers won, honestly, but I, I just like the Ravens coming off the bye and at home, so I'm going to take them minus 3.5. Yeah. How about a best bet, Joe? Who's somebody you're really confident in? Yeah, there's a few of them. I actually like Carolina a lot Thursday night against the Falcons. I'm surprised that spread's only two and a half. Um, I like the Packers against the Vikings. But I'm going to go with one where I feel like it's just too – it feels <laughs> – it seems too obvious, but maybe it's a trap. But I'm going to go with the Eagles minus seven. I think it's seven and a half at home Sunday night against the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys are starting – I don't know who they're even starting at quarterback, a third-string guy, or they're bringing someone in. Uh, the Eagles have the extra rest after the Giants win. I mean, it's crazy. The Eagles are 2-4-1, and one, and if they beat the uh, Cowboys Sunday night and I think they play Washington next week, they could have the division wrapped up with like six wins by uh, Thanksgiving. I mean, it's an awful division. And I feel like that Giants win is one of those kind of wins where you can really catapult catapult your season there, come back win like that against a big rival. Uh, the Cowboys, are just they are just a mess. Uh, in addition to Prescott and Dalton being out there, the whole offensive line is beat up. Uh, guys are questioning uh, McCarthy and the staff. Never a good sign. I mean, they lost – what 25 to 3 I think at Washington right so it's just one of those things where it's just like seven and a half sounds like a lot for a rivalry game 
But I mean, it, there's a reason why it's just they're, they're in bad shape. So I think the Eagles win this game easily, like 28 to 10, they maybe even worse than that. So seven and a half feels like a gift. So Eagles best bet. Yeah, and it's uh, Ben DiNucci at quarterback for the Cowboys is he starting? this week. Is that guy starting? I don't know. Yeah, never heard of him. yeah. So supposedly he he is starting. He is the the third string quarterback, but. Uh, it it should be interesting. I, I like that, but I'm sticking away from that for the best bet. I'm going to take the Chargers minus three over the Broncos. I really like what Justin Herbert's been able to do in his rookie year. He's been able to throw all over the field. Early, earlier on, they were losing a lot of close games with him, but I, I think the Broncos have struggled a little bit to, to score, and I think the, the Chargers are going to be able to put up points against them. So I, I'm pretty confident in the Chargers minus three this week. How about an upset pick? Who's someone, an underdog uh, that you like? Well, I had, I had it now down to two. 49ers plus three. And Broncos plus three. So I'm going to have some fun with it, and I'll go opposite of you. I'll go Broncos. <laughs> okay. Broncos plus three as, as the um, underdog pick. And I agree. Justin Herbert's been great. I think he's probably going to be offensive rookie of the year. Him, I guess, him or Joe Burrow, I guess. But um, the reason, it's more of like an anti-Chargers pick. This is the team, last week they were my lock of the week. And if not for like a Jaguars fumble late in the game, they wouldn't have covered. The Jaguars were winning that game, and the Chargers to me is just one of those. They're just it's, it, I don't know what it is about that franchise. They they have so much talent and never really put it together. Right. I just feel like you know they had a nice win here. They finally you know he got his first win, but now they're playing at Denver. I think Denver's a much better team than they showed last week. They just the uh, the game was in the snow, and the Chiefs just got out to early lead, and it was, it was over. But uh, you know they beat the Patriots in New England, which might not be as big a deal as it used to be, but they um. They play a lot of close games. They played the Steelers close earlier in the year with their backup quarterback. So I think they're a much better team than last week. And I think uh, it'll be a close game. I, I like the idea of getting three points at home, too. I don't think the Chargers are good enough to be laying that. Th- I feel like the line should be like, you know, pick, uh, pick them. So I think three points is a gift. So I think uh, the Broncos come out when a win the game. It'll be a close, really, really, really close game, like 23 20 kind of game or, you know, 24 21. So I, I like the Broncos to win outright. So I'll take the three points. And have some fun and go opposite your pick. <laughs> okay, we'll have to make note of that one for next week. Uh, for my upset pick, I'm going with the Raiders plus two and a half over Cleveland. I've been picking with Cleveland a lot recently, but the Raiders are a team that has been really playing well, especially against the spread. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to take them and think that Cleveland falls back to earth a little bit. I know Baker had a really great performance this past week, but uh, I think the Raiders are due and uh, they've been playing really well against the spread. So I'm going to take the Raiders plus two and a half in a uh, close game, but I think they win something like 24, 20. Yeah, I, I agree with that pick, but I'm not super confident. One, one more just to throw out sure. there to anyone who's just listening, just uh, not, not that it's going to count toward the record, but one, one game, I think, it's just one of those things where, like, you, you look at the schedule, you look, you look at the past performances from you know the recent weeks, and you say this team, there's no way they're going to win. I think the Patriots are going to win at Buffalo this week. Mm-hmm. Everyone is doubting them. Everyone's counting them out. Uh, I can't see Bill Belichick losing uh, three in a row, two and you know, two in five team. I think Cam Newton has a big game. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be like, oh wow, whoa, we counted we count the Patriots out too bad. So if anyone wants a bonus pick out there, take take the Patriots to uh, to win the game or just three and a half. Okay, I like that. I like that. We're going to make a mental note. So quick quick run through on our picks. We're both on the Chiefs minus 19 and a half, both on the Bucks as well, minus 10 and a half over the Giants. In our game of the week, the Steelers and the Ravens, I like the Ravens minus three and a half. Joe is going with the Steelers plus three and a half. My best bet is Chargers minus three over the Broncos. And Joe is going with the Eagles minus seven and a half over the Cowboys. Upset pick, I like the Raiders over the Cleveland Browns, plus two and a half. And Joe is going with the Broncos, plus three over the Chargers. Thanks again for coming on with me, Joe. Really appreciate it. We'll talk again real soon. All right, Matt. Thanks.